morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to, uh, to thank One Million Cups for the opportunity to be able to, to present about Level.io. We're really excited to be here uh, with our neighbors and our friends here in the community. So, like all superheroes, there's, there's a backstory. And so I'd like to first just talk a little bit about the backstory. And just keep in mind, this is one of several backstories. Uh, so, because we, we have several founders as a part of our company, but uh, just wanted to, want to talk about a little bit about my backstory first. Um, hopefully, this thing works. Does this presentation end with a, with a shirt pulling reveal? I just want to know. <laughs> no, no, I don't have anything that, that dramatic. <laughs> All right. So, I, I just want to talk a little bit about myself um, here, just a little bit. This is a, a newspaper article from 2003. When I was wet behind the ears, um, hopefully I look a little more mature now than I did then. Uh, but uh, myself and a classmate of mine, we started an IT company. Uh, we started as a computer repair shop on Merriman Avenue, um, and I really didn't have big visions of, of really growing this to something large. It was really we wanted to. We just loved technology. We loved tech. We loved computers, and we loved working with people. And so we started up this little computer repair shop, and we quickly learned that there was a strong demand for business IT services. And so we, we very rapidly grew um, because of that. And so we were really fortunate to, to be in that space. And what we learned is we started to get clients that, you know, we would get one client, and then that would grow. And with every single client that we that we bring on, it meant that there were more and more endpoints that we had to manage. But when I say endpoints, I'm talking about computers, servers, laptops. And, and soon, there were, we would go from the tens to, to the hundreds to the thousands, and it became a real challenge for us to, to manage everything. And we had some home solutions that we put together. Well, eventually, we, we came across this, this line of software Keep going here. You can see the, the frustration uh, that you get when you have to when you have to deal with more than you can handle. And so we we, we came across this, this software uh, called an RMM, a Remote Monitoring Management Tool, and it helps the IT person. So here we have our, our resident geek, and in the life of an IT person, you, you know, a lot of times IT people just kind of work in the background. If you have an IT staff or an IT guy or an IT girl. Um, you know, you might see that every so often something breaks, but in reality, there's there's a lot going on. They they have their hands in a lot of things. Every message that you send goes through a server. Um, every application that you have has to be installed, and so there's a lot of work that's going on. And so, we invested in one of these these tools. Um, here's here's one that we started we started with in 2005 or six, and I just took some screenshots here. The thing that I want to point out from this is that it's complicated. It's, it, it is. It's just it's complicated. Even for a technical person, when you come into this software, there's a lot to, to, try, to, to try to wrap your, your mind around. And so as a result, these tools make you use 5 to 10 percent of the tool. And so fast forward to about two and a half, three years ago, um, we decided that we wanted to, to, to build a better tool. And so that's where the idea of level was born. And so I want to first introduce our team um, to you. So here, here's our team. There, there are, let's see, one, two, three, five of us in here in Nashville. So I want to go ahead and recognize we've got Jacob here. Uh, he's our CEO. We have uh, Josh Forbes with Quentin here. So Josh is our head of engineering. Quentin does our uh, DevOps. And then I have Jason over here. We also have a business development. And we have a few, and we're also an international team, which is kind of fun too. Uh, Daniel is in Korea, Arturo, where is Arturo right now? Is he in Spain? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he travels around. Sometimes he needs to work, like it's been in different countries in Europe, so we can't pin it down. Um, and Rick is in New York. So we, we have a, just a, a great team, and we're all devoted to, to making this. And so I just wanted to highlight this. When I say that, when I introduce the origin story, I kind of introduce my origin story, but everybody else has their own origin story that brought them to level. So let's talk about what our goals are. So first of all, we wanted to make a tool that was easy, that within five to ten minutes an IT person could get up and run, rather than this big onboarding. 
And so uh, Stephen, our designer, who was the top right, he's in Charlotte, and I mentioned him. Um, he, he really helped us kind of pare down the essentials of the software. So that was, that was one of our main priorities. Second was we wanted it to, to work on all of the devices. And so we wanted to be able to have Windows, Mac, and Linux. Those are the endpoints that an IT person would manage, just be treated equally in our platform. And the other one that I don't think I have a slide here for is automation. Um, and we want to automate as much as possible for IT people so that they're not having to do all the work. All right, so now we'll switch over to demo time. And since the computer's in the back, I'm going to let Jason do my Is being able to just help a single individual. 
Um, and so if somebody calls and says, hey, my email isn't working, or I can't print something, then how, how can we help them? Well, it's really simple. We can search for their name, we can click on their device, and then it's going to bring their, their computer to the technician. And so they don't have to go running around or doing anything. They can immediately get to their desktop with the, the person that calls them, and they can help them. So that's our, that's our demo. There's a lot more I can go into, but I think this is great, great coverage here. So, oh, then you have the PowerPoint back. I liked getting that name in, it felt like I was the... It's been a, a fun journey. Uh, we've we worked on Level for about two years, and then we launched it this spring. So we've been in operation now for about six months. And in that six months, we've gone from zero to 60 clients. Most of them are in the United States. Um, but those clients span a variety of industries, between manufacturing, professional services, and just IT companies. Um, our goal for, for, next, for this coming year is to grow 10 times. So we're, we're looking to get 600 clients by, by next summer. And the way we've been approaching it is email marketing, uh, Google Ads, personal outreach, and out, just outbound sales, and then surfing the Reddit forums and, and stepping in when we can. So, in closing, I just want to show this picture. It's, 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 is your fallback plan? This, yeah, that's right, this is the fallback plan. Because it shows these individuals in control, right? They've got these packs, and with just a piece of fabric, they're in control of, of the situation. And so, I just want to leave you with this image to think about the geeks and the IT people in your life. And sometimes they have a pack, and it's just running crazy. And level is what provides the control and the organization, and just the steadiness and the consistency that they can just take on, one, and an individual can take on a lot of devices and a lot of endpoints uh, because of this tool. So that's it for, for, for this. We'll, we'll go ahead and turn it over for questions and advice because we would love to hear from our, our neighbors and friends. So thank you. Well, to begin with, we have a good question. What can we as a community do for you? That's a great question. And I think we just need your insight. Um, our goal is, is ambitious, that we want, to, we want to grow 10 times by next summer. And so I think that would be helpful to hear suggestions and, and feedback and challenging. Uh, that, that goal would be, would be helpful. Start here in the front. Here in the front. Here we go. Well, one occurs to me immediately is um, can this be done to the cloud? That's a great question. So this is the cloud. <laughs> um, now here, here's a fun fact is that right now the, the, the product is actually being cloud serviced from here in Nashville. So we're not using Amazon or Azure or Google Cloud Platform. We're actually hosting it here in Nashville. And so it's developed and run from our community, which is really unique. Now, someday we may have to just blow out and, and, and jump into one of the main cloud providers, but right now, it's, it's hosted locally. Well, I am really excited because I feel like I'm tracking, and I'm not really the IT hero that you might have all thought I was. <laughs> but, um, and I always have a fun fact that you were maybe my IT guys 15 years ago, and so it's really cool to see this uh, growing up here. Um, but I'm wondering if you are interested in more endpoints when you say um, growing 10 times, are you more interested in those end users they talked about or in more IT folks buying your platform? It would be more for the IT departments and IT, IT companies. Um, there's not really, I mean, yeah, we don't really have a, a, a use case, I think, for, for the end users so much, unless it was a small I mean, business. Yeah, to, to service end users. 
Yeah, I could, I could see where a small business owner would want to would want to do it, go on their own, and not not necessarily have an IT person or outsource IT. This tool would certainly help them in that. But they would there's kind of a level of technical, I guess, expertise that would be expected before getting this platform. It's not really one where a lay person would be like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna become a customer of level and then just take over IT. There would be, be some training that would be required for that. Yeah, to, to follow up on our gasp of astonishment, has this not been done before? Because, it, and then I'm going to make a comment, um, I don't know a spot about servers and all that, but it seemed very intuitive the way you laid it out, and very easy where you can just click a button and update things. And then the comment is, I just finished a year working as a uh, remote administrative law judge for the state of North Carolina, and they had like 300 of us remote, and their updates to the computer were just absolutely painful, and would literally just break the computer for 24 hours. Um, I'm not suggesting you chase government work right off the bat. Right off the bat, because that's going to take you five years, but I mean, there's 300 computers right there that's for one agency. Thank you. So the, the first question was, has, has this been done before? And the answer is yes. There, there's probably about seven or eight um, main players in this space. There's a lot of money in this space, I will say. The, the largest of them just purchased, there, there was some consolidation, and what was the price tag on that? It was in the billions that, that buyout. It was five billion um, that they bought one of their competitors. So th there's definitely consolidation happening in, in this space. But yes, there, it's it's been done. Um, I think what's different about us is the the user first approach. Whereas the other tools that we've seen, they're they're kind of developed by geeks for geeks, and we're, we're trying to. to to level the playing field. There we go, there's a fun play on our, our, our name that we didn't think about before. <laughs> um, but to, just to make it where even an entry level IT person could step in and, and take off. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Did you do VR? I, remember I did. did. Yeah. That was a fun session. Yeah. Awesome. So I've got a number of questions. Maybe this is a dialogue. Um, so the first question is mobile. Are you man, uh, managing mobile endpoints as well? Not yet. Okay. So on our roadmap, we would absolutely love to do that. Okay. It's just a matter of resources and when we can get to it. But I mean, yeah, absolutely. Then that, that space is considered, in our industry, is considered MDM, mobile device management. Okay. And so merging RMM and MDM is absolutely something compelling we'd love to do. Okay, cool. Yeah, like I'm running on Unify and I'm able to push out a bunch of information, but I can't get to the mobile devices, so I would love to talk with you about getting Android scripts, the ability to run. So the second question I had was around um, the endpoint interface. You know, if I'm a client and I'm running 100 units, that's great, but then what does, what does my, you know, what does one of my units' persons see? Is there any interface that they get to see into their own device and connected to the system? Oh, I see. Like, if, are you asking if they can get to their own device, or yeah. you're saying just from their computer? Yeah, if they can see like the status on your, what's going on, because you're going to have some users who are power users, some users that are less. Yep. So right now it's transparent for the users. Okay. Uh, level gets installed and it just kind of runs in the background. There's not any any client facing uh, interface or anything for them to, to use or do anything. Um, when a technician connects to them, there's just a little pop up that says, "Hey." Brian is, is connected to you to, to help promote access to you. Um, but other than that, no. I will say what is on our roadmap is the idea of being able to allow the end users to use Level to get to their machines from home. Mm -hmm. Right. So so being able to, to instead of you know having a VPN, right? There's sometimes that's cumbersome to like have multiple steps for somebody to say, hey, here's how you work when you're at home. This would be a lot easier to just go to the website that you're using password and then you get your desktop right. So, so that is on our roadmap, but we do not have that yet. Okay, the final question is the business question. Um, exit strategy, do you have a, a, an ideal match one where this is where we want to end? That's an interesting question, and I think that, that's probably a little bit different depending on the founder. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, give, I'll give my perspective on it. Um, we, we want to see this thing grow. Um, we're really excited about the product, and yeah, it, an early exit would be, I don't know, maybe it's a prideful thing. We wouldn't 
want to. And, that, and honestly, we've actually already turned one down. Um, so, so we were interested in just growing this thing and building it up. We, we, we really feel that there's just huge potential here. And so, you know, month after month, as we're, we're paying out these salaries and the, the, you know, we're not seeing the income come in. It's, it's hard, right? That's the, that's, the, that's the struggle of risk. Is where you know, how, how far can we go? What's our runway? Um, but we would love to see this thing all the way through, where it grows and we can really blow it up. Well, that's fantastic. It's awesome to have a company with such promise in Nashville that's yeah. doing something yeah. tech focused. Yes. And you're right on the cloud. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. What does your marketing budget look like to grow 10 times this year? And how will your organization look different one year from now if you achieve that goal? That's a great question. So, budget, that's a funny word. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because we're, we're, we're eking everything out of what we have, right? It's, it's worth it. So much of what we do is we're just looking to to do it at low, as low cost as we can. It's trying to see well, what, what's, what traction channel is the most effective. So in terms of budget, I don't even know what our, our spend is on marketing right now. Jacob, could you give us an estimate? What's that? About 2000 2000 a month. So, so there we go. So there's our current marketing budget. Um, if that was a budget, so it's not really a budget, right? <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, we're, we're controlling the faucet in real time. Is, I guess the best way to say it. In terms of what will we look like in in a year if we were to, to grow ten times? Well, nicer shoes. What's that? Blow up some nicer shoes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, the, the good thing about software as a service, which is kind of the classification that we are, is that it can you know one one application can service many many people without the need for lots of additional staff. This is one of the things that attracted us to this industry, is because, at least from my perspective, working in the professional services industry, every client that we brought on meant I had to think about, okay, well, how can I best service them? What manpower or womanpower do I need to add to the team to, to do that? Whereas with SaaS, it's not quite the same. The, right, this, the scaling is different, and that we can add on a couple hundred clients tomorrow, and we wouldn't need to really change our team dramatically. Um, and so, to answer your question, I think in a year, I don't know that we'll have any additional people on our team, even at 10 times the size. And that's simply because we leverage our automation, we're leveraging the cloud, and so a lot of the work is being done through, through programming instead of people pushing buttons. That, that helpful? Okay. What have you done so far to market? Like, what, where, how have you been getting the name out there since you launched? Yep. So we started. Um, I don't know any. I don't know a kind way to say this. We started spamming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, that's what email marketing is, right? Email marketing is spamming. And so, so we we uh, subscribed to an email marketing service, and we're targeting. Um, IT directors, IT managers, uh, senior IT professionals, CIOs, CTOs, and we're getting our name in their inboxes. Now, I would say, I don't know, probably out of that, maybe 20% are, are being read. Um, but that 20% is great because we're sending out 20,000 emails a month. And so we get just that small percent. So, so email marketing is one thing. We have um, engaged with a, a Google um, ad uh, company, and so we're, we're trying to engage their help in just being better with our, our AdWords and, and advertising. Um, one of my one of my night jobs is to to go through Reddit. And I'm looking for forums postings where people are IT people are asking about, hey, how do you do this? Um, this is a big problem. How are you all solving this? And then I can step in and be like, hey, have you heard of Level? Um, here's our link. Can you, can, you, can you try us out? So that is uh, actually really effective because then later people come back and they search for the same problems and there's there's level in the forums and how can we click that? So it's it's nice because it has returns, you know, not just now but in the future. 
And then, um, I will say we've engaged in a kind of a sales training, um, and so we're working on our outbound, which is just cold calling. So, I have a question uh, about security. So, when you have one point connected to many points, then you, in a sense, become a target as well. So, what are sort of the security measures and protocols you have against you know, getting hacked and your client's machines being taken over? Great question. And it's very, very pertinent because the, the RMMs in the industry are absolute targets. And actually, over the last two or three years, two of the RMMs have had vulnerabilities revealed. It was a big deal. So the first thing is multi-factor authentication. That's just, that's the no-brainer. That's when you type in your username and password, and then you have to get a text message, right, with, to enter the code. That at least prevents somebody from getting your password and then owning all of your gear. Because you're right, it's very dangerous. If you've got one place where you can get to a company's data, so that's, that's number one. Number two is we're, and we don't have these yet, this, Probably what in the next couple of weeks or months we'll have this is um, the ability to create a trust list of IP addresses that are allowed to talk to level, so that that way you know it's not open to the world. It's only going to be these few devices that can actually promote in and talk to us. And I, it's and the, and I could go on. There's a lot that we that, yeah that we can talk about with security um, because it's absolutely vital. Okay, I, I have a, a few questions. Um, like a first couple, maybe out of curiosity, but to re ask a question earlier in terms of growing 10 times, you've got your number of clients, but you're charging by machines under management. I'm not sure I refer to it, right? Correct. When you look 10 times, are you really looking at 600 clients or 10 times the number of machines? 10 times the number of machines. And so whether that comes from 1,000 clients or five clients, it doesn't matter to us um, because it is. Yeah, we are we charge per endpoint, and so there are we have, we have some clients that are in the thousands, and then there's others that are small. They may have like 30 devices. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we our, our target. I will just say this: our target is 1,500 devices. It's kind of our target market right now. Um, I, that, that sounds very reasonable to me. Off, off your, you know, your current size. Um, you, you've got your server here, right? Interesting. Uh, I'm curious, A, if you have a out of region, do you have a fallback for that out of this region? In Atlanta, yes. Yeah. Um, and who would you not grow that? You know, do you expect to outgrow having your own server this, you know, if you grow 10 times, or you've got more room than that? Yeah, it's hard to say. The, with, um, without getting too technical, just the, with the ability of containers and virtualization, there's a lot of, you can really eke a lot out of hardware these days in terms of performance. Um, but there's also some things that come with being in the cloud in terms of convenience and, and what, what we call it is DevOps. It's just the ability to spin things up and roll things out very, very quickly. Right now, we're, the, the DevOps of level is being done by ourselves. There's certainly something to be said about, hey, if you outsource the DevOps to Amazon or to Google or to Azure, then it's simpler, but it's also more costly. So I don't know, I don't know where we're going to go um, ultimately. We, we know that there's some very large SaaSes that they self-host. There's also very large SaaSes that run on Amazon. And so both are viable options. Okay. And, and the last thing is maybe more of an uh, idea. But when you mentioned like going to your market, Right? You mentioned going into Reddit and answering some questions and pitching the company. But I, I wonder if there are opportunities for you to contribute to a community that would build your brand name. Um, offhand, I'm thinking, since you've got low marginal costs for adding a few more you know, endpoints, um, maybe a nonprofit that you could take on for free to build a good the community and, and have them help spread the word. Just throwing that out. Yeah. You know, we, we have not actually had very much success in local outreach. We've tried to reach out to the local IT professionals, and we just recently we sent out, I don't know, probably 150 or 200 messages, we got zero response. Absolutely none. So, it's, I mean, we're, we're finding we're getting, we're getting, there's something compelling there, perhaps. That, yeah, I, I moved about five years ago from the Bay Area. Um, you're probably seeing the same thing I am, that the 
startup tech vibes building in Asheville, but built in, not, not built like it is in other areas. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Good morning, great presentation. Morning. Alex Cardona from Cardona Business Solutions. Uh, so I I love the 10x theory, right? If you listen to Grant Cardone, right? There's average action, there's massive action, and there's 10x action. Man, I love it. My question to you is, what are your current IGAs or income generating activities that you do now? So from the time the business opens to the time the business closes, how do you make a dollar? And where are you getting those type of clients? You said outside of here, but uh, I just want to ask you, what are you doing currently to make money? Yeah. So right now, the, to sign up for a level, no, no sales process is needed. Um, it's automated. So if somebody wants to sign up for a level in the middle of the night, they can go onto the website, enter their credit card information, and they're a customer. They're, they're spun up and they're ready to start, start using it. So we don't, we don't have, a, I guess, an onboarding process in terms of a sales team right now. We're just the founders. We're doing it ourselves. Um, so I guess for, through our marketing efforts, we're simply watching how many how many people are landing on our site, how many people are clicking through and signing up. Um, what, what else can I answer? Because I don't feel like I addressed the question. No, that, that's great um, because you did mention that earlier in your marketing. You said that that was kind of a budget issue there with the marketing. So that means you're limited to scaling 10x if you're limited by that budget, if that's the only way that you're getting income. So are you looking to do more in-person type of presentations? Are you affiliating yourself with different business organizations in multiple areas to 10x what you want to do? Because you got to increase revenues to increase the marketing budget. So then you can go ahead and you know get more of your name out there. Yep. So I, I do want to say one thing: that level today versus six months ago is better. And so we can today we can go after more desirable clients than we could in March. By December we're going to be able to go after more desirable clients than we can now. And that's simply just because the product has better features and is more mature. So there's this, there's kind of this ramp up effect that happens because the product gets better and better. And a lot of it is directly through client feedback, right? We have 60 feedback channels today that we did not have in March. And those feedback loops improve the product. So like I said, in December, there's going to be a few more features that we're going to have released. And it opens up new opportunities for us in terms of stepping in front of um, more IT companies say, hey, you know what? We weren't able to replace your product in March, but now we can. So that's, I, I do want to point that out, that as it matures, it's easier to sell um, because of that, because it's a, it's a feature parity, right? Um, and then the, the other aspect of it is, I, I guess I'd like to hear some advice when you talk about communities um, to engage with because I'm not sure where you're going with that, I would love to hear your right. suggestions. Yeah, we'll set a time to do that. Um, okay. Are you working with a business coach now to kind of look at you know, your strategic alliances, where are you getting revenue currently? Um, clearly, I think that's great, because I think that's a lot of business owners, we miss that. We miss that, hey, somebody already bought my product, my product is improved, let me contact that person who bought from me seven months ago, and say, hey, the product is improved, you already have the loyalty, you know, so, can we uh, upgrade it, right? And that's an easy way to make money. Uh, so I'm just wondering, you know, are you working with somebody who can give you those type of, that type of feedback so that you can 10x? We are. We, we're, we're tied into the chamber. Um, and what else to think about if you want to step here? SaaS Accelerator. Um, yeah, we're a part of a bunch of like incubators to help us. Awesome. That's cool. It's, uh, those are my questions. Okay. Eli, the computer guy? <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to throw out a question I already know the answer to, because it's the coolest part about all of this, and I feel like you completely skipped it over. So I, I interviewed Jacob on my channel like a year ago, and so like one of the big questions when I'm looking at this as a tech professional, I asked him, is basically, are you just simply reskinning BNC? And if you're doing that, who the hell cares? And as he explained, like, your engineering is awesome, and so we can talk a little bit about the design of the actual remote interface and how that goes back and forth. Because I think that's the real killing something feature of all this. Yeah. So forgive me for I'm gonna get a little bit geeky here for just a moment. <laughs> so 
so VNC is a, is a protocol that's probably 25 years old now, right? It's, it's been out, and VNC is a way that you can present a desktop, a remote desktop to your local screen, right? I'm remote it. Think of TeamViewer, right? TeamViewer is kind of a modern take on that. Um, so you're right, we did not use VNC, we did not use like any other tool, it was developed in-house. Um, and so we have awesome engineers that were able to, to put that together. What it does, A, it saves us on licensing fees. We don't owe anyone anything um, every time somebody uses our product uh, by, by the fact that it was developed in-house. So thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> Uh, thanks for this. This was great. Um, I'm curious about the Reddit thread stuff. Uh, how effective is that? Um, if, if we were to look at our, our channels, and, and Josh might be able to better answer this, what, what would you say the percentage of hits? Was it about 20%? I really don't know. Yeah, okay. it's probably close. Okay, so about 20% of the hits on our website come from Reddit. Um, and what we've actually done is, is I don't just, I don't scour Reddit like all the time. Let me just tell you, we, we found a tool that we have keywords that we're looking for. And then whenever those keywords show up on Reddit, we get an email. Cool. And so then it's like, hey, if somebody's talking about IT remote support, boom, in our inbox, hey, there is a current Reddit thread going on right now about IT remote support. We'll jump in and then we'll see if you can contribute. Are you guys doing similar things with like Stack Overflow? We are. Stack Overflow, wow, what a tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, you, 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 yeah, you have to like write a dictionary to be accepted as an answer. Um, so we've tried it and we've, we've just gotten banned. I mean, like, <laughs> the process is too easy. Yes. <laughs> My last question. Cut his mic. Uh, uh, so you guys are charging per device under management? You mentioned there were six to seven other companies that are doing kind of next gen device management SaaS solutions now. Is that business model different than their business model? In any kind of way? There are a couple of them that charge per technician instead of per device. But it's pick one or the other. But most of them, it's either going to be per tech or per device. Um, and that's that's it. I don't, I'm not aware of any other model in terms of billing other than those two. Okay. All right, we have time for just a couple other questions. Oh, yeah, we have uh, okay, my, first off, amazing presentation. I'm not a tech person, and I understood everything you said. So, like, oh, seriously, awesome. bravo. You. Like, that's, I feel like, a hard beat. Um, and, and even in the questions, you've been breaking it down into, like, layman's terms. So, we'll ask her how the, the dry run went. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When I presented it to her, I was like, oh, I am not speaking like at, at, at the right target audience. I just wasn't, so. Yeah. 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 So, very well done. I really appreciate that. Um, and so, I just really want to be clear, like, who is your ideal client that you want to sell to? You were mentioning, like, IT folks. Like, could you just, like, like is that, what's the demographic there, or the business demographics? Like, who's your ideal customer? It's a great question. So there, there are really two groups of, of customers that we see. One is internal IT shops. So if you were just to look out, um, let's just pick a big company in town, Ingalls. Ingalls has their own IT department. Um, and there, there may be 30 people in that department. So, they would, so that department would be a potential customer of level. Is if those 30 technicians could use us to it and manage their systems. There's, and so that's one. The other is there are companies that that's all they do is IT. They're outsourced IT departments for small businesses. And so that would be the other category. Those are called MSPs, managed service providers. MSPs would also be where that's, that's their entire business is let's do IT for somebody else because that's all we do, so we're going to do the best. Um, so that's your question? That does, and I just like to take it a step further. Is there a certain like amount of employees in the business, or certain like angle income the business makes that like you're really targeting? Like Ingalls, okay, they've got thirty, you know, or however big they are. Is that like the level of client you're looking at, which is like small business that has twenty employees? 
Yeah, so I would say that the smaller, like the 20 uh, employee shop would probably not be our target market. Um, although, it would certainly be useful, but I guess, again, it would be, is there is there one in 20 that would be like the IT person that could, that could take on level and, and use it? A lot of times, those sorts of businesses, they just outsource it, right? They just say, hey, take, so let's find an IT person to take care of us. Our client would be the person that's taking care of them yeah. in that case. Um, but once, uh, once an organization starts to grow where they do have a dedicated IT person in-house, and I don't know, that, that can vary, maybe 50 employees and they're going to have a dedicated person, that's perfect for us. Because as long as there's a dedicated resource, then they can sign up and they can start using us. Um, and then my thought went for like marketing and to, to reach your goal was like organic marketing. Like where are these people that you're trying to reach in IT? Where are they hanging out? Where are those people, whether they're in a coffee shop or at the brewery or are they on social media? Like how do we leverage free marketing on a podcast, social media, Facebook groups? Yeah. So Reddit is where a lot of them are, but but you know that's it's kind of one dimensional. There's there's so much more. You're right that we could probably be doing. Um, so I think I think we've got room to grow and improve there because our for example we, we don't have a YouTube channel like that you could go to and that we're speaking to IT people. That would be great if we yeah. did that, but that, that's that's just a time consuming thing. We need to figure that out. Um, our blogging is weak. So we, we could definitely improve that just to drive traffic to teach about how to you know manage IT. That would be great for so I, I think there's a lot of room for growth there. Yeah, I, that's where my because also because your presentation was so well done. Hearing you speak about it, I'm like, do I need you? <laughs> um, so I think there's so much value in that when you can showcase and it's human to human, like seeing you on a video versus an email, you're bot. We all get the emails, right? Yeah. We're like, pass, no, thank you. So even in your emails, to consider a little video clip, where you That's email that idea. instead of just words. Nobody wants to read the words anymore, right? If you're not going to grab anyone. Do a video. And, and then even for the YouTube, I would offer, it seems time consuming. I like legit just do it on my phone and like upload it to YouTube. You don't have to edit, like you don't have to like try to think simple if you're going to do something like that. But I think there would be a lot of value in doing some videos, whether that's social media, YouTube, repurpose all of it, put it on the same, same video, all platforms. Um, but seeing the, the connection between, like, that's how I'm connecting to you right now as right. a person. And I think that would be really valuable in a space like tech where everybody is remote and working behind the scenes. So, like, show some face and make that connection. That's great feedback. We're taking notes, guys, on this. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we have time for one more question. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> my question is, where's Arturo now? As a medical professional, I try to stay as far away from Reddit as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, free week back there. Um, but as a client of Advanced Data, we were very, very happy with you guys um, in that iteration of our work. And um, seamless, no hip issues at all. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens as well. Um, can you comment on healthcare applications? Because behind tourism is still the biggest industry here. And specifically, like rolling up telemedicine. And it's a shame there's not a huge locally based healthcare system here. That's a great question. So, the thing about healthcare is there's a lot of devices, right? And that's perfect for us because we manage devices. And, and so, one of, I think one of the great things about us is that um, when we start to think about all the different stuff that's out there, there's this, this word IoT. Has anybody heard this before? Internet of Things. Internet of Things refers to all the stuff that isn't a laptop or a computer that is tech. And in healthcare, there's so much IoT. And so I think that's where, where we would really fit, is installing our agent on little IoT devices, and then it's like that leash, right? That pack, 
where it's really hard to manage. Like, where is that thing, and, and what you know? How do we how do we manage it? So that I would I would I would say that's probably going to be the best thing. We need to be seeing that in the manufacturing space. Manufacturing is similar. They've got lots of stuff like machines, and now they're installing level on those machines, and now they can manage them. They've never been able to do that before. Um, is there anything else I can answer for you there? Well, this I'm glad you picked up on this. There must be forty thousand that are He's got. I mean, at least one per employee. Yep. All right. Let's all put our hands together.